Brian, thanks for joining us. As you've been aware, there's been uh, plenty of questions on Twitter, Facebook, and the forum, ctfsu.net. Okay, Paul Clark from Facebook asks, for a big bloke who's getting on in years, do you have to watch what you eat throughout the season? Yeah, you always have to look after yourself, especially here now when I'm coming up to this age. But like I said, all the way through, it's just a number. Of course, I think it's just full start as a professional footballer. You need to be careful of what you eat and drink. I think it's uh, how it goes here nowadays, all the nutrition and all the sports science and all that. And to perform on a high level, we need to, yeah. John Barnett from Twitter. What has been the biggest moment of your career? Obviously, um, the run we had in the Carling Cup in the, in the promotion season with uh, Burnley uh, in 2009 was, uh, was massive. But I have to say, obviously, the game that stands out is obviously winning uh, at Wembley uh, in the playoff final. Uh, and get promoted to the best league in the world, obviously, is the one to stand out for me. Aidan Parfit from Facebook. How different is playing in League One to playing in the Premier League? Um, obviously, you could say that the football standard is higher. Um, maybe it's not a physical. You maybe have, a, funnily enough, you'll have more time on the ball in the Premiership than you do in League One. Um, and League One is similar to the Championship. Um, what I would say though is that the massive difference is that they are more athletics, but if you make a mistake in the Premiership, you get punished. That is, uh, that is the main one where maybe in League 2, 1 and Championship and so far further down, then obviously uh, you might have to make a little bit more mistakes before you get punished. So uh, that is the main thing. Red, Red and Red from CTFC.net. Since arriving at Crawley, what do you like and dislike about the place? Well, uh, I like everything about here. Um, I like the community, I like the club, it's a nice little ground, you know, all the fans around. Um, the lads here as well, you know, we're all in the same boat, obviously, from the circumstances that there was only three senior players and uh, two kids from last year. So, uh, we're all in the same boat. We didn't really speak that much to begin with, but we're getting to know each other and uh, that's what I really like about it. We can see we got a we got a good little uh, command race. Um, we, we're good friends here already, uh, and that's a good thing. The thing that I dislike is obviously, uh, I wouldn't say the location, but from my point of view, uh, it's obviously the travelling for where I live, for where my family is. Uh, that's a little bit of a stinker. <laughs> Ewan from Twitter, who has the worst dress sense in the team? Oh, Emmy yeah, O'Connor, by country mile. Well, I don't know what he's thinking. He, loves, he just loves his flip-flops all the time and uh, his Blue Jays stuff. Uh, he's a massive fan of uh, what is it, Vancouver Blue Jays. Uh, he's, a, he's a Vancouver, I don't even know, baseball. But um, yeah, I don't know what, he, what he's thinking. He, uh, he needs to go do some shopping here soon. Luke Scaife from Twitter. What's your favourite hobby outside of football? Uh, looking after my boys, both of them play for their age. Um, Jamie is 10, Sebastian is 8. Um, they both play on quite high level for um, you know, for their age. So uh, when I get the opportunity, I'm trying to look after them and drive them around. And to be fair, my boys are, are my hobby. I don't really do anything else. And it's the boys and, and the family and the wife, obviously. Stephen Fuller from Facebook. What is the most comical goal you have conceded or seen? Ah, uh, too many to mention. Uh, I don't know which one to pick out. Obviously, I've always done the drop the ball and and then somebody have, have scored. I obviously had the one between my legs as well and it's gone in. So, on, on, on that point of view, yeah, I'd rather say maybe one that I've seen. I've seen a goalkeeper try to throw the ball out and um, change his mind. But then the ball hasn't really got out of his hands and it's like like turned the ball into his own net. So he more or less threw it into his own net because he he regretted the decision he was just about to do. But uh, that's probably the most comical one. But, you know, he can choose on one of mine. You know what I mean? We all made mistakes. Bridges Boy 79 from CTFC.net. Which player was your role model when you were growing up? Um, I was I obviously... Always been fascinated by Peter Schmeichel. Um, when he came to Manchester United, uh, even beforehand when he was at Brumby. Um, I met him as a kid. Um, he was doing his community stuff to come out and visit our little football club back home in Copenhagen. And that was the first time I met him and the first time I shook hands with him. 
Uh, so obviously uh, since that day I've always like uh, looked after him and then looked out for him. I wouldn't say after him, but I looked out for him and see what he was doing and obviously going from Brunby to 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 Manchester United. Uh, and I've always been a Manchester United fan, funnily enough, but you know, for my era I should have been a Liverpool fan, but I've always been a Man United fan. So um, for him to go there and obviously succeed like he did and be the world's best goalkeeper obviously that's my idol phil pennicott from twitter do you guess at penalties or watch the ball and player um all goalkeepers nowadays do research on it um, we do research we look at patterns we look at uh, how people runs up other players are running up to the ball uh, you have an idea even beforehand you know that's the mind games it's not like it's not a guessing game anymore it's uh, is is quite complicated and uh, obviously the older you get then obviously you get a little bit more ideas. Alison McMullen from Facebook, how did you feel at the end of the Barnsley game? The fans really appreciated you coming over to them. Well, obviously uh, it's a long way to go um, and it's a great clean sheet, we won 1-0, you know what I mean, the lads done really really well and obviously with the support for the fans so uh, you know it's the first game and with a great result, obviously, really, really happy. So uh, just walked over just to, to shake some of the uh, fans' hands, simply just for uh, showing the appreciation that uh, we all have for, for them to come all the way up there to, to, to look at the game. Carrie Louise Gray from Facebook. How did you get into football as a child, and did you always want to be a footballer or goalkeeper? Um, it's always been it's completely different. Um, how you do it back home in Denmark compared to over here, where here now you have the YTS system and you have all the, the lower levels uh, from kids and um, you can sign them in a, in a young age now. I know that for a fact because my youngest is signing now for Everton and he's only eight. So it's a young age where we didn't concentrate about that until we were 12, maybe 13 years old. But then in school, it's football in the afternoon and if you're on a high level, then it's probably a double session as well, and then obviously you have your tea in the evening, and then you go back to bed again and start all over one more time. But um, obviously, I was I didn't get in goal until I was fifteen. So obviously, I always wanted to be a professional footballer. For me to go and goal as a fifteen year old and then do so well afterwards, it's uh, always been a privilege and always been a dream come true. But I have to say that. Um, from my point of view and for a lot of my friends' point of view, you have to be at the right time and the right place, especially when we're back home in Scandinavia. And uh, because otherwise nobody will spot you. Um, we, I got a lot of friends that probably had more skills and probably more uh, what better footballers than I was, but they never had the opportunity that I had. So I'm um, absolutely over the moon and privileged that I have an opportunity to become a professional footballer. Um, I am trained as an electrician. I finished it off before I went to AC Alkmaar, so that is probably the thing I was going to do with, uh, if I wasn't a professional footballer. Reds79 from ctfc.net, what made you come to England to play and who has been the best manager you've played under? Um, I came to England, uh, well my first contract was in AC Alkmaar and uh, I didn't play down there, um, so obviously I was, uh, I was looking for a new club. Um, the uh, reserve manager down there was English uh, and he knew Brian Little really, really well in West Brom at the time. And um, I just went on a trial and um, obviously he brought me in and then we just started from there. So we just were looking for something else and and uh, I just well had the opportunity and I uh, just took it with both hands because I think the English style of football suited me better than the Dutch as well. So, um, unfortunately, I never had a chance to work with Brian Little because uh, he brought me in on Friday and unfortunately <laughs> he got sacked on the Monday. So, I only saw him over the weekend, but that was it. I never worked with him. But well, very, very grateful for him to, you know, bring me over here to, to the English game, that's for sure. Carol Bates on Twitter, what's the best prank you've ever pulled? I'm guessing there's a few of these. Yeah, we've all done the DP in boxer shorts and uh, cutting shoelaces and socks and all that kind of stuff. But uh, the one that probably stands out for me was um, a few years ago, we, we got our boots 
from the PFA. Um, they send them to to us, to all the clubs, uh, to all the players in in a big box. And I came um, into the club after a day off, and uh, somebody wanted to do a prank on me, and finally I've done the number two in my box. And uh, I got a little bit messy. So uh, I knew who it was. I can't mention any names. But uh, the uh, vengeance and the revenge was, uh, I went down to Tesco's the day after and brought a fresh mackerel from the fishmonger and uh, put it under the spare wheel in his uh, brand new Mercedes and uh, they didn't find it until two weeks later. So uh, don't mess with the beast. <laughs> Chat kicking from Facebook. Why were you nicknamed the beast in the first place? That's when I was on trial in West Brom. Uh, there was another goalkeeper called Chris Adamson. Um, obviously, I've been there for nearly a week. I went back home and I back to, to Holland, back to my club there in ASAT. And in the meantime, they've done an interview with that Chris Adamson, with the goalkeeper, and uh, they've asked him about the new goalkeeper who's been on trial. And he just said, well, you look at the size of him, he's just a beast. And then when I played my first game, came to West Brom, I played my first game, my debut game against Tranmere Rovers, and we won 2-0. And everybody was screaming, they were like, beast. And I thought they were booing me. So I was thinking, we won 2 0. We haven't won for a while. We had a clean sheet as well. I thought they are harsh over here, by the way. But then I was told by the press afterwards it was just because, uh, obviously, the interview when uh, Chris Adamson had started a little bit of a trend there. So it was uh, the beast, and it's just stuck to me since. Ben Blackmore from Twitter. How do you find so many images for morning banter? <laughs> Uh, a lot of research, a lot of research, and a lot of dodgy pages on, the, on Twitter <laughs> as well. Uh, yeah, so you know, it's uh, it was just something I did here. When when I got on Twitter, I just thought uh, I thought it was so many amusing different photos and all that, and just saved most of them. And then I had to flick through a few other websites and pages and all that, and it just. I found all the different Twitter accounts uh, that does them kind of photos and the same on Facebook, and it's just. Uh, where I get them from, to be fair. I'm just a copy cat. <laughs> Finally, Dan West from Twitter. How many more years do you think you can stay in the pro game? I've said all the way through, I'm uh, doing the transition, obviously, now um, as a pro goalkeeper to be a uh, goalkeeping coach. So uh, that's the reason why I'm doing the goalie coaching here as well, to get a little bit more experience. But I'm concentrating 110% about the goalkeeping, and then uh, that comes uh, secondary. But I've said all the way through, Touch, I will keep on going until the body don't want to let me do it. So uh, as long as I uh, can pull off the saves and uh, still feel comfortable about it, don't miss any training sessions and all that kind of stuff, then uh, I'll keep going.